Yep. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the insights here into the refereeing. And uh, well, are you looking forward to do the finals? Will you? W do you uh, want I to I be? I, I hope so. Uh, <laughs> so. So far, I have a feeling I have a good uh, control on the games, yeah. and the feedback I get is so good. So I, I hope because um, the girls find I don't have to referee. Okay. Because so there's no recent team there. Yeah. But uh, against uh, Bamberg and Orcas, yeah. I hope. But uh, that's uh, this is I'm taking Manuel. Okay, that would be an amazing game, and oh I yeah. hope for you you will be refereeing that. I hope so. <laughs> I, I like to be in the water. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much, Kai, yeah, for yes. the insight, and uh, see you later. Yeah, thank you. Bye. So uh, we have uh, Torsten here with us. Torsten, you're back awake. Yeah, <laughs> finally. We just left the half didn't tell me that you're leaving. <laughs> you were snoring so loud, so we, we didn't <laughs> want to uh, disturb you. I see, I see. You were dreaming and oh. moving. Okay, back in the game. Uh, back the in game the game. Here. You see the Czech team playing against uh, from Budweis, uh, against uh, the Turkish team uh, here from uh, Izmir. And uh, I've talked with some of the uh, Turkish players. Of course, they're quite frustrated because they from want yesterday, to play. Yeah, the penalty yeah, yeah, they yep. want to play against Akaran. And uh, they, it was a very, very close game. It, it was f uh, decided in penalty shooting. There were, I think, four or five rounds played with uh, scoring and even holding at the end. And there was a um, uh, penalty was uh, defeated. So there was initially the referee told the Turkish team that they won. Exactly, there that's what we saw. There was another decision then that they discussed the situation and then they decided no, the attacker was too far away from the basket and the attacker attackers in this in this case they wanted to repeat the penalty this one could be scored and then finally it was a it was a very very strange situation then yesterday we've seen there so a team even to mention that you're emotional winning the game you're celebrating then the referee comes on and now you need to make another round because this was not fair so we repeat that creates that. frustration and this creates frustration i think this was a kind of handicap then we had another situation when the player got injured I don't know what it exactly what was, but there must be something at the at the bottom. Ah, that's so where they, yeah. they they worked on the bottom yeah, of the tiles. He was swimming through the bottom and he got a cut in his shoulder. Fortunately, he's not that big, so he's still playing. I checked Some of out. the tiles are very sharp, probably, yeah. and they try to reduce the sharpness uh, with the tool. So we see here a close match, because on the other hand, I also talk with the Czech team and they, the Czech team, and they're also very, very frustrated, because they also had a very tough game against Akron yesterday. Yes. They played very well, they had uh, even a couple of good opportunities here to get close to the basket. Uh, on the other hand, it was then a very good attack by Akaran, which had the chance here to, to, to steal a spot under the basket and had really one, two seconds time to score and was immediately made. So um, later the game, they, they had done some, some, some coordination issues and they received the second one almost on the empty net goal, or the empty goal. So... Um, yeah, here we see now two a bit frustrated teams here now playing for the place number seven. And uh, we will see who will be here now better in shape or with the better strategy here now around. Um, I was quite wondering because I asked the Turkish team about uh, how, how they became champion and they told me there was a, a tournament last year. Um, it was played in, in May or something like that and they and they won the final. Oh, there's a goal! First goal uh, here this for Turkey. Quick. So we've seen Hakan giving a pass to number 12, er Erkin. And I don't know who's finally scoring because it was a pass back to the defender by a player mate. He passed back to the goalkeeper. And I'm not really sure. What we how see it in the replay. Uh, you can go in the replay in yeah. your live stream. You can uh, pull it back uh, two, m uh, two hours. And I gave the microphone and take a break. Give the microphone yeah. to Jörg now and uh, have a coffee and get a new players list here, a um, new referee list. Thank you for listening to me and uh, be back in a second. Intensive game with a 1-0 lead so far for the Turkish team at the very beginning. So let's see what the Czech team is doing here now. They had a very strong defense yesterday against Akron and all the other tough teams to play against. So this is a big surprise that they get this goal. So Jörg is now here with me. Jörg, you're 
You've yeah. seen a, a couple of, uh, of uh, female matches now here, being back on a, on a tough game with two very physical playing teams. And um, what do you think about your opinion so far? What, what, was the, what was the mistake the Czech team did? Yeah, I did not see uh, the how Turkey, uh, the, the goal, I think. It's always uh, the, the matter how you position uh, your defense around the goal. So the uh, Czech team at the moment it's coming quite late down in the defense position. The uh, the four checker is uh, basically too far away from from. Uh, oh, there's another goal, one! Another goal from this the was open also quite side good here. and pushing away the goalkeeper from the bottom. The defense player came too late into the position so um, we see in the defense that uh, defense player below the basket is uh, coming too late down and uh, the four checker is too close involved in the defense is not uh, attacking the, the but this was right but now we see time out here by the Czech teams already of course, they need now to get back in the game order. They, they received two quick goals, at least. They played with the ball, but immediately when the Turkish team got close to the basket, it was initially introduced by also one of the blind passes. I think the score was made by number two. So the Turkish number two was... The, the, the game style was very nice. You've seen the attacker was attacking the defender, and then he made a kind of, of you can say, blind bad pass. On the other side, number two, I don't know who this player is, but he received the ball and he had the chance from the open side spot to go directly uh, to the goalkeeper. The defender was too far away. This was correctly a uh, correct mention by you, and then he had the chance to score. So we see here this idea of, of Turkey to go close to the basket and make some certain blind passes behind the back. Do you think this is something more teams should is, uh, establish in their game style? Uh, everything it's uh, about... Uh body memory I would say every move uh, should be a quick attack by Turkey with three guys oh this was another oh, nice chance number oh. six here over the goalkeeper Boom, just uh, uh, tipped on the, the, the top the of the <laughs> ground the ring and uh, but so the counter that still have in the ball position uh, it's difficult for the Czech you see here team. now yeah, you see a bit uh, I don't know that the Turkish team is probably that trying to play there what did you say to play out their frustration here? They're really, really fast in this game. They're attacking so, so um, engaged, even with a 2 0 yeah. lead. They don't stop attacking here. They had so far three very, very good opportunities. They, they made two goals, and this one was a shot over the goalkeeper, and he hit the ring of the basket. It was very, very close of to uh, yeah. make here the 3 0. So far, I'm not really sure what the Czech team can do here. They played so oh, good yesterday. I think this gives at uh, least a yeah. warning. Uh, grabbing on the on the throat, uh, maybe two minutes. I'm not sure. No, it looks like uh, just a warning against the player. We see the Turkey are very aggressive. The one Turkish player position near to the defender on the goal. But now we have two less Turkish player on under the water. Uh, don't bring it. The, they're not mentioning to bring the ball to this player, but. At least I've talked with the Turkish team, I was quite surprised that they have some really young players. I think one of the youngest mm -hmm. players is 19 years old in the Turkish squad. They have uh, some couple of players or who are around 20 to 24 and um, two experience like Hakan and Eric who, uh, who are uh, a bit over 30, maybe 33, 34. And two players even older than 15, did you know them? No. <laughs> I do you think what? How long can you play underwater rugby at least with an age? <laughs> oh, I know <laughs> players. Uh, they're playing still Bundesliga 55, 55 and even yeah, more yeah. and over and uh, they're very. But do you think there's an age you should stop, or is it just a matter of <laughs> stamina <laughs> and uh, physical? Uh, I stopped when it's uh, losing to hurts too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's so okay. <laughs> that, was, that was basically my decision to stop. <laughs> and uh, when I, so I can't... I what was your age then? So how old have you been there when you stopped? Uh, I stopped uh, National Team 99. Mm -hmm. so how old uh, have you been there? And uh, actually I uh, was 35. 35. Don't know. Oh, this is quite young, isn't it? <laughs> But now we see here we have a lot of players in the national squad currently who are in this age and you can say probably if you 
if you talk about, for example, Bamberg, you have a lot of players here. Oh, there's another good one. All right, this is Eric Ray, but number four here doing a great attack now. Yeah. Bringing the ball, handling the ball around the goalkeeper. There was no defender in the spot, but it was very well defeated here by, by the Czech team. The Czech team had a first initial attack. So you can say the first really aggressive attack from the Czech team turned immediately to a counter attack from the Turkish player. Uh, number four who played here a very great counter attack he could not score but this could have been the 3-0 as well so far the problem the, the problem that the attacker was yeah. too high yeah definitely this also that it, uh, now the goalkeeper was with he attacked the, immediately the goalkeeper and on a you can say a couple of centimeters yeah. over the ground and not using the floor as a fixed point to bring more power into the yeah. so into the it was too That's high attack uh, if he would uh, attack from one side uh, from the bottom and then move to the other side he would have enough time yeah. to have uh, to put the grip to but use you the see button. here now how aggressive it is number 14 from the czech team um was he very very uh, physically attacking the jersey of the turkish player now here again number 25 now so this is great they, they so bring so the ball to the other the side turkish uh, team, uh, with number six here on the open side now waiting to receive the pass this was this guy, as at least, who got injured yesterday. You see this tape on his left shoulder. This was the cut he uh, he got yesterday during the game. But fortunately, it's not that 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 hard injured, so he's able to play. There's not a big round. Uh, there's no matter of, of any security issues. But here you see the number six down with this tape on his left shoulder. This was over with number six who got injured yesterday. So 24 seconds left, 22 seconds left in the first half. So far, we've seen just one single chance to... Oh, the defender's not seeing where the ball is. This was also a big defense again, mistake. Yeah. I don't know what's wrong with the Czech team today. They need to wake up here. Yeah, the Turkish uh, uh, game is very aggressive. Uh, yeah, Akin now having the ball, acting. number 12 now. Passing the ball through and the game is over. Honor with number two, received the ball, but there's no chance here to score another one. So, is it two zero halftime break here? And uh, I would, to be honest, I'm quite impressed about the, the power the Turkish team is bringing in here. While they were on a, on a similar level than other teams, and even even the Czech team was on a similar level than Momers or wha what are similar teams. Uh, you see here a really dominating Turkish team who had four to five chances to score. On the other hand, we have just team, the Czech team one single time at the opponent basket and not even with a good chance. So. Yeah, I this think is a clear match so far. The, the, the clear match and, uh, and, and what I see is that the Turkish team did not use all the chances they get. So the, 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 the attack on the goal is not yep. enough consequent. We have seen the one thing, so we have seen the first goal, it was maybe uh, Hakan was close, to the, uh, was close to the basket, gives a pass on the open side and he scored in. It was more or less a physical goal. The second one was this blind pass behind the back. So someone was attacking the, the defender, passed the ball behind the back, and it received the Turkish player, which was number two probably, and he scored immediately. Then we have seen another chance by number four, who was attacking the goalkeeper by a counter attack. You mentioned yeah. it right where too the too high, so it was so too high, so he didn't make it. And at least we had the chance by the player who was throwing the ball over the goalkeeper and he, he hit the, the ring, ring of the basket. It could yeah. be even a 4 0 now so yes, far for yes. the Turkish team. Now, what I'm, I'm surprising, uh, as always, uh, you see there's a, a player position near to the goal and wait that he get the ball. But when I see this, uh, and as a coach, they're just laying there but not ready to receive the ball. In every sport, uh, like handball, you see them, they have the hand. Show yeah. me the hand. Here I want to have the, the ball. ball. Now, yeah. if it's, it's something that's uh, working uh, uh, on the circle, the handball or something, something like that. The ball uh, and that it's in American football, they yeah. say, put the triangle, f catch the ball first <laughs> and something like that. And there the guy is laying and the hand is wherever. Yeah, and right. when the ball comes to them, uh, oh, the ball is it's coming. Coming the chest. Or yeah, like yeah or something like the that, or, or, not, or they don't look. <laughs> so, I can't imagine why the players in this position don't show the ball. Yeah. And the even this is something ball. usually not really trained. For example, if you have a player who, who gets who gets hidden by another, so you have someone at the front of, uh, hitting or stealing the stealing uh, the defender position, and someone is lying before. 
Usually players think that they immediately need to pass this player in position. No, they just yeah. need to pass in the hand. So even if the player is in front of me, I can rise my hands up, just give me the ball inside my head, uh, yeah. bring me the ball down, pushing the defender away as so of time to spot. Yeah. But this is this is usually what we probably need to train more in underwater rugby in a lot of teams. So far we see a Turkish team here. Ekini again was winning initially. He was the first touch. Let's see. The Czech team here now, back in the second game now. They are immediately starting to attack. There's the first good chance here to score number 11. Probably it was Jaroslav Gracia here. Jaroslav Gracia with the first good chance here for for a Turkish team to score and the referee came to the surface I'm not really sure what he's saying about but it may be that the first good chance here is it a penalty? I'm penalty not sure it is a penalty. penalty this is crazy so Czech being back in the game they didn't have any chance to score in the first half now we be have it have a, they, like they are back with a 2-0 coming back in this game getting the ball possession immediately attacking the basket like they did it in the other games before against Akron for example and now Jaroslav uh, Gretzsch with the best chance so far while pulling the ball against the head the goalkeeper here with a foul tried to stop him and now there's a penalty it is um, now a, a good chance now here for Budweis to score they need this goal right now to get back so it was number 22 of the Turkish team who was sitting on the basket and now we see here yeah, number right. 9 trying to defeat here against number 55 who is Alice Petaka. oh no he lost the ball oh my god Alice Petaka lost the ball against number 9 of the Turkish team he was not able to to score here he, was, he went really quick down he tried to score immediately this is what would you think is the best strategy? What would you have done in this position? Uh, it's I was always defender, and the, the thing is, the, the trick as a defender is, when the guy tried to grab you with one hand, he forgot the other one. Yeah. And this, this is, is so much focus in one hand. Yeah, you they, they try to, 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 to keep the ball somewhere, oh. uh, protecting and uh, concentrating only the grab. And the guy... The, the hand with the ball is forgotten at that moment. This could have been a game changer here. So far, the Czech team missed the chance now here to score another one. This is, this is a big pity here so far. So still, the Turkish team here with a 2-0 lead. But the Turkish team is now aware about that they can score here. The first really thing, they put all the power into the Turkish basket. It was immediately a good chance to score. It was stopped by a foul. It was number 25, if I remember right who was uh, with a shoulder or something like that in the basket. Now we see here Hakan with the number 10. There was a no. the next blind pass. Have you seen that? Awesome. So Hakan yes. was still in a position like a block. He received the ball. He passed the ball back in the midfield uh, on the blind side and, and, and saw there would be here number four receiving the ball and making the attack. But this is a great one. Of course, you can do this with a comfortable lead of 2-0. They will probably not but do again, this, this by a zero this zero, uh, this, this uh, backward pass to the it's middle. quite sufficient. Yeah, I mean, if yeah, it, if it's, it, if it's, it it's, it's always. If it's successful, it looks very good. That, that this this play is always successful if there's someone in the middle position yep. between the line one and two. So this is n uh, it's one of the, the weakest area because it's difficult to, to to defend, and if you control this position, you control uh, control the yep. forward passing, the the the, the ball movement and so on and did not give the chance uh, for the defender and for checking to destroy the game so we are now here in the second half of the Czech team we have seen a, a great team attack of the Czech team so far it was uh, then uh, number 11 Jaroslav Grecia who had a best chance here to score we start then with a penalty who was uh, made by Alice Petaka who missed the chance to equalize because number 9 of the Turkish Really good shot. We got the ball. Now we see number six here. Awesome. The Turkish player number six here with the best chance for the Turkish team here in the second half now to go. But but Boyer again the ring. Boyer here saved the uh, Czech team here now and um, didn't give them the chance now to put the ball into the basket. So Met Boyer here he, uh, still keeping here. Um, keeping the Czech team in the game it's still at two goals they need two more goals and they have five minutes left so here in the second half 
so far they had uh, no equal an equal second half here with one very good chance on both sides a bit better chance here on the chance side because they had a penalty what is a one one situation but but the ball is not the ball control is on the turkish side the, the defense the four checking where we yeah. uh there are more than oh no here's another one maybe he tries to get in the empty basket attacked by immediately three players you see here yes. one players attacking the hack this is not very nice this could be also given a time penalty but the referees that don't see it, they don't want to see it i'm not really sure but this is something I'm, I'm a bit complaining about referees so far that there are a lot of faults close to the baskets that are not seen it's a very hard game this year attacking mass hat or something like that so for that reason it's very very important to have well fixed and well prepared equipment in a tough match like this yeah yeah everything uh, you have you should not lose your flippers you should not <laughs> use your ma mask uh, uh, everything should be 100% fixed. You uh, hear a very, m m probably the best advice you can you can get by a national team coach. I had uh, fixed my mask so hard that they, they were able to. We see a mid here with a single attack here from above. He's trying to, to get through two Turkish players, but this is at least not possible. You know, other players have tried the same, so they're so massive and good organized here. Number 27 here. Uh, Passing the ball through to number 55, who was the, the attacker at the penalty. He was given up, going back to the surface, not trying to forecheck anymore. This makes it easy for a Turkish team here now. It yeah. comes through. We see a turn. How with can I get two. a blind pass? Giving two, two attackers. Passing up to number five. Khan here with the best chance. Here. Oh, the second good chance here for a Turkish team now by number five. And we see another penalty, but now for in favor for a Turkish team. This was awesome. You have seen that great chance. Massive attack and something like that. It started with the attack of Matt Bouvier. He got, you, you he got into two. The ball got lost. Number 55, Alice Pedaka was not really really aggressive enough for checking. So that makes it easy for the Turkish team to get through their health. So there was a pass from Hakan. Also, kind of blind pass uh, towards two Turkish players. And at least it was number five from Turkey here who, um, who got the chance to score. We was a defeat by a... Uh, Five fouls are now here. The next chance for Turkish team to score is now one one situation was a penalty. So and we've seen here penalty number is five it was Khan, maybe his name is, who tried to score here and uh so take from and it was defeated by a penalty. From that, uh, so try to get a yeah. so now the the defender is two so passive, we see here number so the nine ball is who was the guy yeah. so, so the and guy let's go. the guy who defeated the penalty against number 55 of Czech team. So, Alice Pudeker missed against the Turkish number nine. And now this same number nine is now scoring against the Czech team. So this is a player who can score and defeat. This is quite right. unusual, isn't it? No. No? no you think the, the best attackers are the best defenders? Uh, oh, it's the way off. The <laughs> you have, uh, you have uh, candidates who can do both. Yeah. We have this national team, some are more specialized for uh, defending, someone that uh, can do both. Mm -hmm. uh, at least you have to have one uh, who can do both, uh, so that gives you a wider, often, uh, wider options in the, uh, in the game when you have to do the, the final penalty th uh, throwing so the ED3. So now there's referee coming back to the surface, maybe he needs to give a time penalty or something like that. There was a massive attack from the Czech team so far. So we see in both situations, every time it's getting very, very close to score, um, there's something the referees need to call. So it's very, very hard, physical and even a bit, I would not say dirty game, but a very like a tricky game of both teams. So they're trying even to use uh, not rule conform uh, tactics or techniques here now, but yeah, otherwise it's it's have uh, you have to see somehow the frustration of the, yeah. uh, the Czech team that the game plan doesn't work out. So when they lose the ball, yeah, they like don't. The 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 and he, lo he lost the ball, yeah. and normally he did not go yeah. after the ball, he just go up. Yeah. But they have so only 50 seconds left, it's not possible for the Czech team to make three goals, and, and even this pass, you know, the pass came to the captain, it was dropped down, and now we see here Hakan. Oh yeah, he, he was holding by the hand, so he passed the ball in front, so the player needs to stop him holding, and then he tried to score here, but this is, this is very, very interesting how, how fast the Turkish team is, how, how prepared for these counter-attacks here. Uh, the Czech team, they did a good job, but to be honest, they, they made too much mistakes here in the defense, they were giving too much space for the Turkish team, they lost 
too quick the games, unconcentrated passes. Like we have seen here before the corner, there was an incomplete pass. And even without any any uh, you know activity of the Turkish team, even there was no forechecking, the ball dropped at the floor and was catched by a, or caught by a Turkish player. These are mistakes you cannot do in such a level. So this was game, a clear victory game. for yep. the Turkish team. Turk three, three the zero. Turkish team from Izmir now here is winning 3-0 against the Czech champion uh, from Budweis. Um, it was a tough match, very physical. Both teams had the chance of a penalty. The Turkish team made it. On the other hand, we had Alas Pedaka with the number 55 who was not able to score against the Turkish number 9. And um, so, all in all, we need to say this is this was a, yeah, a almost earned victory of, of the Turkish yeah. team. Definitely well, earned. Question, who, who, who will you interview? Who will you interview somebody from the Turkish team in their final match? Yep. Gabi has got the camera. On iPhone, you can take a break So you can think of, maybe Hakan doesn't speak such good English. Hello, Gabby, right? Yeah. Thanks. Hello, George. We're back together again. Yeah. Pleasure for me. Yeah. I'm a like water rugby specialist yeah. and uh, an opinion maker on the water rugby, I would say. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Seeing I your article. I only reflect what people tell me. So ah, yeah. everything what you wrote and reflection is also part of you. Well, it's good, not artificial intelligence. <laughs> <laughs> what do we got coming up for our next match? Uh, now we have uh, the Piranhas, which just salute uh, into the camera. Uh, and the other team uh, is, let me see. I could not recognize, it's not displayed yet. No. Oh, here we are. Yeah. Could it be Firenze? Yeah, it could be Firenze, I think. I have to find my glasses to check this. This is game 62. It is Firenze against uh, Piranhas. Uh, now we see it also it is the, uh, the, the, This is, this the is the loser of the semi-final five. Right. Team. But this is yeah. yeah. But this is uh, Piranhas. Now Piranhas this against Firenze. Yeah. So we have here game 61, 62. 62, game 62, that means uh, we have another seven games to see after this. Some of the uh, most exciting games, the finals, of course, to come, and the bronze matches. Yeah. But uh, the finals, it uh, will be tough, uh, uh, especially for the Duisburg team uh, in the final against Akaren. Even I'm a member of a Duisburg club and might not say that and I hope no Duisburg players are <laughs> listening at the moment. It, it, will, be, it will be tough. Yeah. And uh, they have to perform excellent in order to have a chance to win this game. Balls in the center of the pool now. Yeah, so we are watching the Champions Cup uh, 2018 in blue. France from Italy and we, uh, the Piranhas from Spain. Uh, this is uh, game 62. It will be 68 uh, to the final of the male team. Uh, we are preparing uh, the this woman teams we have here in Berlin this time uh, 27 teams 15 men teams and 12 women teams out of 15 nations around the world from Singapore Australia United States and all over Europe 
Uh, it's uh, impressive to see all the teams here. And we good progress in developing uh, new teams. Some yeah, and uh, seeing totally new teams coming, playing first time in this international circumstances and opponents, it's interesting to see how fast they're adapting tactics, equipment style, behavior, and something like that. So this is, I think, a big part of the social media so that uh, you can see the sport, like we are broadcasting this, explaining that. So teams like uh, Singapore, which uh, four years, five years, uh, starting playing on the World Rugby, okay, with some help from someone, but seeing them playing, that it's not like a newcomer. No. Seeing the, the Australian girls, they have a system which is very near to uh, Norwegian, German, or whatever system, uh, which are the best teams, uh, and I would say it's, it's amazing to see them play. Yeah, and uh, their mentality also that... that uh well, fr from this uh, Marcus club in on the east coast of the United States, Connecticut, they have... Mm -hmm. 14 year olds and uh, 13 year old I think yeah. or 14 and so they want to play they're here and in two years <laughs> it'll be a lot yeah, better yeah I, I think that it's, it's a great chance to hear to get the experience uh, but it's uh, it's good for our sports it's uh, the, the